Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to collimate a Hyperstar with a uh, SCT using the Hotec Advanced CT Laser Collimator with the Hyperstar adapter. Let's uh, get started and see how this goes. Right over here I have my C11 Edge HD set up. I took out the secondary mirror because we don't need that for this collimation procedure with the Hyperstar. And I'll show you uh, the collimator. Right here I have the collimator set up on a tripod. Now the collimator comes with a uh, like a little XYZ tripod that allows you to move the collimator uh, at, at different angles but I already have my own ball head so I'm just going to use that. And right over here you can see the reflector dish that comes with the collimator. First thing we want to do is turn the collimator on to the number one mode. Number one mode is just the basic cross here. There we go. So I've switched that dial at the top of the collimator to number one. So it's projecting a laser onto the primary mirror. And then that laser is going back right here onto the collimator and it's creating a cross pattern there. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that cross pattern is properly aligned so that the left and right and up and down value are all the same. So by moving the tripod back and forth, up and down, uh, and by moving the telescope in the X, Y, Z axis, I have managed to get that cross to number six on the left, number six on the right, number six at the top, and number six at the bottom. So it looks like my reflector dish is perpendicular to uh, my scope axis. So that's what we want to get started. And then we are provided with this little laser diffuser paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this laser diffuser paper and I'm going to put it right on, on that reflector dish. And I'll show you what that does. So I turned off the lights. It should make it easier to see. So as you can see over there now, it creates this kind of a pattern on the reflector dish. And what you want is you want that round circular pattern to be perfectly circular. So uh, in my case, around the number six line in the outer perimeter of that reflector dish, it's almost perfectly circular. Let me take a closer look. Yep. And to get it circular, if yours is not circular, you can either use the hand controller to move the telescope up, down, left, and right, or much, much easier is to use the altitude and azimuth bolts on your telescope to move it up, right, left, and down. So these are the polar alignment bolts. That's what you'll be using to move the telescope up, down, left, and right. And that'll allow you to get a perfectly circular pattern. Just pick a line and move the tripod back and forth if you need to get that pattern perfectly circular. Okay, now that I know that that diffuse donut pattern is perfectly circular, I'm going to take off the diffuser. Our next step is going to be making sure that these cross here's are perfectly on the line. So there's a cross printed onto that, uh, that um, grid basically, that uh, reflector. So we want these up and down, left and right, these cross lines to be perfectly on that line. And to do that, you'll move your uh, tripod uh, well, you, you'll, you'll rotate your tripod using the knobs on the provided collimator. I have my own heavy duty tripod with these knobs, so I'm just using mine, but the reflector uh, comes with uh, one of those heads that uh, has similar knobs. So in my case, by moving these uh, in various directions, I can tilt the collimator back and forth, left and right, and that has allowed me to get a perfect pattern so these lasers are on the line there on all sides so i don't need to do anything else there okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this reflector to mode three or actually mode two so i've switched that to mode two and what mode two does is it projects not only that cross here but also three bright dots that hit the reflector and then go back uh, you can see them up on the wall right now, but then they go back and hit the reflector. So, uh, well, they hit the primary mirror and then they go back and hit the reflector. 
So now what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to install the Hyperstar uh, assembly, the call meter, right here. So this is my Hyperstar adapter and I've already installed or threaded on the Hyperstar call meter assembly that comes with it. So it comes with this part uh, right here, this part and then this part and this part. So these three parts all screw together and then this entire assembly screws onto the telescope. Our next step is going to be to look right over there and you can see right in the center there's a tiny little red dot. Now you might see three red dots actually and that's because your telescope is out of focus. So to focus all of those three red dots onto the center of the Hyperstar assembly by using your focuser. In my case, I have the Celestron electronic focuser hooked up to my laptop. So I focused using that and I got all three of those dots to converge into one single little dot. Oh, there we go, okay. So yeah, right in the center, there's just one dot now instead of three dots because I'm in focus. Now we wanna ensure that the crosshairs on the collimator are still in the same place because when you installed the Hyperstar, it probably moved your telescope a little bit. So now you can uh, just adjust the crosshairs a tiny bit uh, by moving the scope only up and down, left or right, until those crosshairs are back on those lines perfectly. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, so I verified that the crosshairs on there are still centered. Installing the Hyperstar didn't move them too much, but I used the polar alignment bolts on the mount to move them and center them again perfectly. So if you look closely, you'll see a very, very dim, uh, three dim dots on there likely. So you have to adjust your focus until the three dots, uh, the focus of the back of the telescope until the three dots over there converge into just one dot. Those three dots are uh, turned into one dot, you know that you are in focus. So that's what we need. Now our next step is going to be to remove this little reflector mirror from the front of the Hyperstar assembly. And what we're left with is that very shiny piece of glass. And that shiny piece of glass is projecting a laser onto the target. And I'll show you the laser right there. So this new laser has appeared. If I close that again, yeah. So this new uh, small laser cross that has appeared, that's the one that we're going to try to center now. So by centering that new cross that has appeared, once we unscrew that uh, cap, we get that centered perfectly right in the center. You could use those lines to better center it. You could use those lines to better center it rather than just relying on the dot in the middle. And to center that cross, we are going to use the screws on our Hyperstar. So these are the uh, push-pull screws. So we undo these tall locking screws a little bit and then we loosen the, uh, the fatter metal screws right next to the locking screws and then we tighten down these locking screws a little bit. That applies the pressure that pushes the Hyperstar uh, apart. So that's how we're gonna adjust that new cross here that has appeared and that'll allow us to align the Hyperstar uh, axis to the primary mirror. So let's do that now. Okay, now I've made the adjustments to the Hyperstar locking screws. And as you can see, that cross is now exactly in the center, centered based on the crosshairs around. And the next step now is going to be centering that secondary mirror of the telescope right in the center. So for that, we're going to put this collimation cap back on. So the last thing left to do now is to adjust the corrector plate. So you move it up, down, left or right. Uh, so on my C11 Edge HD, there are four screws on the outer sides over here that after I've loosened the corrector plate screws in the front, I can adjust those screws to move the corrector plate up, down, left or right. If you have an older SCT, it likely won't have the screws on the side. For that, you'll just have to loosen the screws in front of the corrector plate right over here and then move it up or down, left or right by hand and then you can use some paper shims to center the corrector plate. Okay, so corrector plate is loosened. Now uh, the 
a secondary mirror can move around in there if I try to move it by hand. But instead what I'm going to do is I will grab my Allen key, this guy right over here. And I will gently uh, adjust the screws until until that little red dot is in the center and I'll show you the red dot. So right there, you can see that red dot. I'll dim the view a bit more. Now that red dot is a little bit high. It's not exactly in the center. So what I need to do is I need to move that a little bit lower so it's perfectly centered. And uh, I will do that by adjusting these screws on the side of my corrector plate. So after loosening the screws at the front, I will adjust these screws on the side with an Allen key and that'll move my corrector plate up, down, left or right. And always remember, this is a push-pull system. So when you're adjusting the screws on the side, loosen the screws on one on two of the sides first and then gently tighten the screws on the two opposite sides. So in my case, uh, the laser is a little bit high, so I need to move the corrector plate up, uh, corrector plate up to bring the laser to the center. So I'm going to first loosen the two screws at the top of the corrector plate, and then I'll slightly tighten the two screws at the bottom of the corrector plate. Now we are very, very close to the center. I'm also just keeping an eye on the target to see how that is looking. So I've made some adjustments. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten down the screws here in front of the corrector plate. And you just want to very, very gently tighten them. You don't want to over tighten anything. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that all of the screws on that side are just barely touching the corrector plate. Okay, so that is all done. I'll show you what it looks like here and what it looks like on the target. So right over here, you can see that that cross here is perfectly centered. And if we look at the target, we can see that the three dots over here on the corners are on the same line. They just have to be on the same line or the same distance from the center. It doesn't have to be you know, in any particular area. Like this one's on the last line. This dot is also on the last line. This dot is also on the last line. So that means it's a circular pattern. And that means that our job here is done. Our SCT with Hyperstar is collimated. Here's the final result. That's the collimator. You can see everything is perfectly concentric. Okay, so it looks like our job here is done. Everything looks to be in order. Now I just have to do a star test at night and see um, how everything looks under the stars. Thank you for watching and see you next time.